cry havoc and let loose the floral painter in all of us. Hello minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I've had a lot of requests to do a loose floral painting and as I've told many of you, I'm not really the floral painter. I have no problems with floral painters. I admire quite a few of them and love the work of quite a few of them. But um, I have had requests to do it and as a departure, I thought, why not? And I'm further testing uh, this Canson Heritage. So um, this is a different style and a lot of times the style and the way you paint makes a difference on paper. So we're looking at that again. But I'm doing this loose floral, this uh, this orchid, which I took a picture of at uh, Biltmore State in North Carolina. What? Yeah, I did, that was a spoof on a Shakespeare quote. Yeah, I know what your favorite Shakespearean character is. Shall you tell him or shall I? It's Yorick's skull. But you never played Yorick's skull when? Okay, okay, calm down. I know you have dreams too. Yeah, I think you'd make a great York skull. Can we get on with the program, please? Anyway, let's get to painting and have some loose fun with this orchid. All right, so for this loose floral, I'm going to do this orchid. I took this picture at Biltmore Estates in their conservatory, and they just have one of the most beautiful orchid collections I've ever seen. Now, I'm going to probably be adding some contrast. It's hard to see even on screen. Uh, where some of these petals separate, but uh, this will I'll be using as a guide and I'll depart probably here and there. I'm using this Neptune quill. I'm going to start by using this. Holds a lot of water and when I do loose and loose anything, and what I'm most experienced at loosely is doing loosely is birds and portraits, but uh, it really is no different no matter what you're painting. But I start with very, very, you can start with water. A lot of people, when they do loose, wet, and wet florals, they just start with water. Well, I'm nearly doing that. I'm, I've got such a pale wash, you can barely see it. And uh, essentially, I just start drawing in that pale. And that may even not be pale enough. I want it so pale that I can barely see it. But I do want to be able to see it. And I just start drawing and getting the paint or the paper wet. Flowers are very easy to paint and draw. They're just an, an extremely forgiving subject. The trick with florals, the good florals, I think, is contrast. Make it interesting. They look flat and cut out. And I don't care whether, and that's my preference, I know, but I don't care whether they're loose or tight or botanical tight. I just like to see some striking uh, contrast. Now again, today I'm using the new Canson Heritage. So this is yet another genre, uh, the spontaneous landscape that I did. Uh, I thought was was pretty successful. I had a good time painting on the paper. Uh, I still have some things to try to know how much I'm really going to like it. But uh, for all genres. I, it, it has some very good lifting properties. And I want to keep all these little areas that I'm drawing kind of segregated for now. And that way I can control, better control where they mingle and spread. Watercolor is usually always a light to dark medium. So, um, you start out light and then you just kind of add your darkness and your low light contrast as you go. I like to approach loose things in a, in a two phase approach. Some people like to paint everything at once and be done with it. Uh, I don't like to do that. I like to paint the loose wet and wet parts. Then I like to go back and do uh, a detail phase where I glaze over some areas. And if I'm keeping it loose, uh, those glazes will usually just be to pick and find some edges. I'm using some quinacridone red mixed with a little bit of 
Quinacridone Violet. And now I'm going to start dabbing in some deeper tones here and there. And where I've kept them segregated starts to make a little more sense. But I can link a wash up at any time. By linking, I just mean touching one wet wash into another. And if I'm not doing it, it's usually because I'm trying to preserve some whites or some light values. And here's an example. I've kept those separate. I'm going to touch them, let them bleed. I think some people have the idea that loose painting is like wild and woolly and free. Um, and maybe it can be. You know, some artists may do it that way. Um, actually, the best uh, loose artists, florals or otherwise, I've seen are ones that go slow, take the time. And I'm going to touch right here, let that bleed up in there. You know, when you're painting loosely, you keep, uh, you try to keep the character of those washes. Try to keep it nice and and fresh. And I'm just looking intently at my um, reference to know where to add those uh, low lights, contrasty, shadowy colors. And I think I'm going to touch right there, let those bleed together. Now, some people will look at this, some loose painters will look at this and say, oh man, that's not loose at all. I paint a ton looser than that. And that's fine. For me, this is loose. Flower is just a great way to um, showcase watercolors, wet and wet abilities. I'm just slightly blotting my brush here and picking up excess water. This orchid is really more pink than this. I don't really have a pink on my palette uh, since I don't use it that much. If you're a floral painter, you might want to get a nice coral or pink color to enhance your palette. Some of these washes are getting into background territory, so i got to be careful. I don't mind. I think in some cases I would get a little background. But... I need to be careful where they show. One of my favorite painters is Morton Solberg. I'll put a link to him down in the description. He's best known for his uh, landscapes, uh, landscape wildlife landscapes, I would call them, because usually he's painting a landscape and then he's just including. Uh, a wildlife figure or two. It might be a bird, it might be a bear, it might be an elk or wolves, something along that line. Uh, but he he paints the whole painting loose and then brings out just like one little area of detail. Uh, and it's usually the the animal. Well, one thing he does on occasion is florals, and his florals are like drop dead gorgeous i'm i'm just not even kidding you they are just amazing if i wanted to do florals like anybody would be like him uh, they're pretty instructive i think to look at his his floral work and i'm dabbing in some extreme low lights now here and there I always like to try to keep that, that contrast moving down, moving down in value. Let me say down. And I'm going to get a little bit of a background there. I had a lot of water in my brush. So I'll just feed it with some pigment. 
Again, I don't think it's critical. Uh, it back runs are easy to get with a quill because they hold so much water. So your uh, painting could have dried to an extent. And then all of a sudden, here comes this quill that's just loaded with water. And they hold a lot more water than a normal brush. And all of a sudden, boom, you got a back run. Start adding a little bit of some background greens. I'm only going to hint at these. I'm not going to put in like a full background. But I do want some. This is another great thing about quills is if you got a good one, you'll have a really great point. I'm going to sneak some dark pigment right up in there. And then kind of make this broad leaf kind of shape here. Alright, uh, this is pretty much dry. I'm switching to a smaller quill. This is where I have to fight my tendencies. Because uh, I love to detail things. But I am not wanting to do that here. Um, but what I do want to do is, is pick up some edges. Um, and first I'm just going to start with some deep greens. Uh, and make sure I have some low lights in areas uh, surrounding the flower where it will really pop. So um, with some Payne's Gray, Pr Prussian Blue, and Sap Green, uh, I'm creating a really, really deep, dark green, okay? And this is just, you know, wet on dry painting. It's very simple. And I'm just going to pop that in in places. And some of this is just intuitive. I'm not really following my reference. I'm just thinking about where I want it to kind of uh, frame that flower. I like pulling darks out of corners. Um, landscape painter Sterling Edwards actually has a name for it. He calls them PowerPoints. And they're usually like little triangular corners of dark. And they can really just make uh, a piece pop. You know, as I mentioned, I haven't done a lot of floral painting. Uh, so much of really good floral painting to me, or at least that, that appeals to me, let's just say that appeals to me is design uh, because you're dealing with these abstract almost shapes um these kind of amorphous shapes i think design is very important and the best painters i've seen in florals and loose any florals tight or loose there's just a nice design a nice way that the the painting flows and and interacts with itself.
Well, I hope that gives you some ideas for creating your own loose wet and wet florals. Give it a try. Have fun with it. Thanks so much, everybody. I'm going to let this dry and maybe take another peek at it a little bit later. But uh, I think that was a good exercise in loose florals. Thanks for liking and subscribing to my channel, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, patrons, for supporting me and sponsoring this channel. It means a lot, and I will see everyone in the next